Hello, hello, dear hearts. Marilyn here, Family Heartbeat Mentor, with another message for you about relationships. And this one is make five shifts toward your relational fitness. I had just spoken with you about relational fitness and how your family's heartbeat depends on it. Now I'm going to help you to see five shifts in focus that you can make toward your relational fitness. You know, I think that moms have one of the toughest jobs in the whole wide world. I really do. It's not an easy matter to be always taking care of other people. You know, just get to take care of yourself and sometimes you don't even get to do that, but you're taking care of lots of children all the time. And uh, so it becomes a really difficult job and I'm much more keenly aware of it lately because we just had a grandbaby born a couple of days ago. He's on his very third day of life. Third day of life. Can you imagine only being three days old? They're so precious. But you know what happens in those three days? Mommy and Daddy don't get any rest. They don't get any sleep. They are so tired. Oh my goodness. These kids are so tired and they're living in our house. And so I see it and I, my heart just goes out to them. They're just so, so tired. And they're grabbing a nap every chance they can. And they've got a two year old, you know? And a lot of you moms have your kids close together in age and and you remember those those times when it just felt like life was never going to balance out again. Well, it does. It does eventually balance out, but when you're living it, it's tough. Anyway, even as your kids are growing up, it's tough. You have a major big job raising a family and and to be intimately involved in helping your children become who they were created to be, it's a lot of work. So, don't you find sometimes due to the overwhelming demands of children and homeschooling if you are you know assuming that responsibility too that this potentially fulfilling purpose what god designed it to be anyway to be very fulfilling and it was very fulfilling for me it can often lead to the neglect of your own personal growth and development and and i get that i was there once too i neglected myself a lot because of caring for kids it's like like mom comes last. Um, I remember my mom, it always seemed like she was the only one that didn't have the winter coat. You know, she made all of our clothes, but mom didn't have a winter coat. She was always making clothes for us kids. And eventually a time came when she did have that winter coat. But I know during the toughest times of raising a family, mom tends to put herself last. And, and I was there once too. And um, you know, the demands of, of serving multiple little people as soon as you rise in the morning can drive your day forward so fast that you barely have time to think about anything except to meet the urgent needs and hope for a bit of time you know to just escape into quiet and calmness and usually that's the restroom <laughs> where you can escape for a moment you know into some quiet but you know, it's easy to excuse yourself from personal development and I really want to encourage you that there are some things that you can do toward personal development even when you're unoverwhelmed. So you think that there's always tomorrow to get serious about some area of your life that needs attention, but I want to give you a perspective, a new perspective that changed how I approached my parenting journey. Let me give you this perspective. I held this since my children were ranging between, let's say, maybe three to 11 years old. That's when I really started changing my life. And I knew that I wasn't equipped to homeschool, let alone ready with the wisdom to form their character in the Lord. That's a whole nother story. But I was deeply concerned about ruining my children. I just knew that I would if something didn't happen in me. But somewhat intuitively, I knew that I had to change if I was going to experience any success in this endeavor. So I knew that to become a better person, 
personal growth and development would be absolutely essential. So here are five shifts that I made toward my relational fitness for my family's benefit. And these shifts are in the focus of my life, okay? And that's what these shifts are for you. They're in the focus of your life. What are you focusing on? Well, the first shift I made was in my person. I committed to becoming a better person, a more loving person, a more whole person, a bigger person with more capacity to give out of myself. Now changes didn't happen overnight as you can imagine, but as I learned how to bring areas of my life under internal rule that had only been disciplined outwardly before and some of them weren't even disciplined at all, I became familiar with what growth and learning processes looked like because I was experiencing true growth every single day. I really believe that a um, Christian, a true follower of Christ, experiences growth every single day. We are to be challenging ourselves all the time in the Lord. So I shifted my focus to become a better person in Christ. Now the second shift that I made in my focus was my sense of responsibility. I didn't wait for my husband to change. <laughs> and I know a lot of women are right there at that place. They think they're supposed to be following their husbands. You're not ladies. You're supposed to be following Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit whom he sent to help you. You have a very important job to do in your family with those kiddos of yours who are depending on you to become relationally fit. No, they wouldn't know to say that. They couldn't articulate that to you, but they look to you like you're God. They look to you like you know everything. And you are supposed to know a whole lot more than they do. Well, you cannot wait for your husband to change. What I did was I took personal responsibility to the best of my ability at any given time. I stretched myself by God's grace far beyond my previously self-imposed limits while continuing to pray for my husband and influence him to the extent that it was fruitful to do so. And you'll know what that is for your situation. Now, the third thing that I did was I addressed my emotions. This was very hard to do. And I found, um, you know, this message is on my blog at MarilynHouschel.com. And I asked for ladies to give me comments about which one of these um, five shifts um, they needed to address the most. And almost all of them mentioned their emotions were the hardest thing for them to get under control. Well, this is the area that I brought under internal rule right away, my emotions. I needed to harness them so they wouldn't get the best of me. You know, being ruled by your emotions actually makes you make bad decisions. Uh, your emotions aren't what's supposed to be driving your life. It's important to get them under control. God can balance your emotions. He balanced mine. But you need a real relationship with him where he's doing a lot of work inside of you so that your emotions won't get the best of you. I learned how to pour out my heart to God, listen to his correction, and then obey the practical instruction in the form of inspiration, good ideas he gave me. Um, in the areas that I was attempting to bring change in my life and eventually my emotional nature became balanced and I could easily transcend my emotions through distressing times no longer giving them power over me to direct my course and that is what you need to do too moms okay so then this the fourth um, a shift in focus I made was in my time I challenged my appetite for how I spent my time. You see, now that that um, statement is born out of the knowledge of me as a selfish person. I was a selfish person. I didn't really want to lay down my life for my family. 
I was being compelled to by the Holy Spirit. And God wanted to do a big work in me through that season. And he did. He accomplished a tremendous amount of work in me. But I had to learn how to challenge my appetite for how I spent my time. Because every chance I had to escape is what I wanted to do. I wanted to escape the hardness of being a mom. I wanted to escape the hardness of homeschooling. I wanted to escape the hardness of staying home and only tending to children. I wanted to escape, you see. And I know a lot of you have felt that in the past and you're learning the joy and the fulfillment of really growing godly Christ-like fruit in your family and you wouldn't change that uh, vocation for anything else. Thank the Lord that he changed me so much. I didn't care about anything else after that. I just wanted his will in my life. And I just wanted to become who he wanted me to be. So I could be the best possible mom and the best possible um, person for my family. And then also to move on into being able to help other moms as well. Like I've been doing in the last many decades. Well, so I challenged my appetite for how I would spend my time and I began learning the overcoming life in Christ as I practiced letting go of self-centeredness and learn how to give out of myself to know my children and to add value to their lives and so this time thing it actually affected how I spent my mornings when I got up. It affected how I spent my evenings after my children went to bed. It affected what I did in my spare time when they were playing contentedly and I didn't need to be doing table time with them or chores with them or giving them some kind of instruction or correction in their life. I was, I used those periods of time for my own personal inner growth and I, I, uh, educated myself a lot and I was fruitful and productive in the the activities of my day. I didn't watch television during the day. I didn't um, read um, um, literature that didn't do anything for me. That it was just entertaining in other words. I um, didn't entertain myself during the critical times of my days and my week where I should have been doing, you know, something more productive. I learned how to be productive with all of my time. I wasn't always trying to escape into something else. So I really stopped those kinds of old habits that I used to have and moved on into a really productive, fruitful lifestyle in the Lord. Um, then the fifth one, the final one of um, the area of life where I shifted my focus was my thought life. I brought my thought life under immediate self-discipline. You see the dialogue that played in my head was unhealthy and it all had to change. And a lot of that was just feeling sorry for myself. It was complaining. It was negative. It was um, my um, uh, mental um, um, a connection to my emotions. You know how the emotions are connected to your thought life. You're thinking negative thoughts based on the feelings that you have that sort of thing. Well, I began educating myself and renewing my mind to learn different ways of thinking about the preconceived ideas I had and culturally held assumptions. And of course, in that period of time in my life, this all had to do with home education, about education itself and the learning process and about discipleship and, and just, just and all the big ideas surrounding those areas of life where I was hard at work in my family. Education discipleship, that's what I was doing. And I began challenging myself 
in all of my culturally held assumptions and preconceived ideas so that I would be uh, ready to make the changes that God was leading me to change. I decided that I wasn't right about everything. I decided that just because everybody out there did it, didn't make it right. And I was willing to listen to the Lord and how he wanted to instruct me so that we could produce the fruit, truly be fruitful with our lives, our relationships. Well, I accepted the season I was in and I committed myself fully to the work that God wanted to do in me. And I encouraged myself with specific prayers and thanksgivings. And that helped to harness my thought life so that I didn't have a negative outlook on life. And you know that all those years since then, I've had a real good, clear, strong thought life that is harnessed so that I know how to background process and I know how to compartmentalize and I know how to put things on hold that is are troubling me. I learned how to encourage myself when my thoughts would start to get discouraged. I learned how to lift my spirit up and stay close to the Lord during the hard times of making changes to bring better fruit in my family. You can learn how to do these things as well. You know what happened during that time? My soul became peaceful. My mind was quiet. I actually became who I was destined to be. I became the real me instead of the noisy person living inside of me all those years. I became a person that I never actually knew before. And these, um, these disciplines, I was disciplining my mind, my emotions and all these things by the help of the Holy Spirit. I didn't do it by myself, let me tell you. It was the Holy Spirit speaking these um, needs to me and speaking the correction to me and speaking instruction to me. And it was the Holy Spirit comforting me and reassuring me that I was on the right track, that I was on the right path, and I was doing well. So but these, um, these disciplines became established in my life and they were no longer uncomfortable, but they became familiar and welcome. I became the real me in the Lord. And I grew up so much in those first three years, I became a different person in the Lord. The old literally had passed away and all things had become new. And that scripture that was so real to me, how God, let everything pass away, all the old, and behold, all things became new. Oh my goodness. That's just a wonderful, wonderful experience when God is making all things new in your life. And I know some of you actually understand what that means. So the Lord had helped me to a beautiful place in him and showed me how to bring my children into that place with me. And so my capacity as a mother and a home educator had increased exponentially. Life became a wonderful adventure in vital purpose, learning how to love and achieve goals and dreams. And I learned that personal growth and development is essential for parenting and homeschooling success. And so I practice an intentional uh, personal morning routine that caused growth and drove my life toward readiness and success. And because of the schedule that I personally was on, that my family was on due to my husband's work schedule, I practiced a nighttime routine as well because I had a lot of time alone. And I made the very most of all my time alone to do things with the Lord that he wanted me to do. So it readied me, it made me, uh, it made me grow, it changed me. The Holy Spirit and his presence in my life changed me. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life, ladies. You need the Holy Spirit. So all of this points back to my day-to-day -day decisions to become a bigger person for my family while I received the parenting of a lifetime. Don't you need the parenting of a lifetime? I think every single 
parent does you moms in particular from your loving heavenly father so do you need to become more relationally fit in one of these areas you know i'd like to hear from you which of these areas you think you need to shift your focus toward to become more relationally fit see these are things that you can do uh, in real time you can work on your emotional capacity you can work on your mental life and bring it under discipline you can work on how you spend your time um, you can work on your person and just determine that you are going to become a better person for your children by the help of the Holy Spirit you can decide to own responsibility for your personal growth and development and become the parent that your children need you to be regardless of what your husband does do you see what i'm saying i hope you're understanding what i'm saying ladies well which of these five areas you can note it here under the video or you can go to the blog and chat with me there as well i would love to hear from you and what you think about these five shifts in focus that will help you to to become more relationally fit and that just means having the capacity to do what it takes to be fruitful in your family to grow the family relationships that god wants you to have to um, work christ-like character in each of your children in all of your relationships and then that with your husband as well time management is a real struggle for me rosemary is saying that and yes time management would be you know if um i think that time management well you know based on this particular message if you're if you're um deciding what is really really important to you you know if these five areas are important for you to get under control in your life i think the time management has a tendency to fall into um place a little easier um, that's easy for me to say right now in retrospect i think that um lifestyle has something to to do with that i know that when our family was on swing shift time management was extremely hard for me um, right now with two of our kids' families living with us time management is a little bit more of a challenge i find that it i start to go to do something and a half hour later it still isn't done because i've been stopped by multiple conversations along the way with the little ones or my own kids or just the dynamic of having all these different schedules that everyone is on and that sort of thing and so i know that there are some very real um challenges associated with time management and you just have to keep pressing through and do the best that you can but sometimes it just has to do with a lack of focus in purpose and what you know you're you know maybe you don't really know what you're supposed to be doing with yourself and so end up um, not doing anything very well and I know that time management for me had a lot to do with my purpose I knew what my purpose was and I stayed home and I took care of it and so I was fruitful the Lord gave fruit to me because he helped me so much to overcome my own self you know it's an it's an overcoming challenge even time management is um, in the natural and in the way that I am made my personal makeup I don't have a time management problem I think it takes extenuating circumstances in my life for me to be challenged that way but I have other challenges that I've had to overcome and so your your challenges uh, will be pe peculiar to you and how you're made you know everyone has different um, challenges that are unique to them but you know what the Holy Spirit wants to help you with that why don't you make it um, bring it uh, bring that issue to the Lord and say Lord this is something that I have struggled with my whole life I need to conquer it and I need your help to conquer it and you know the Holy Spirit gives you the simplest little um, thing actions to take that tweak how you're doing things it's not 
I found that it's not this big, huge deal. It's there'll be simple little things to tweak in how you do things. Ask the Lord for that. Ask him, what are some simple things, one or two simple things that you can do that will help you manage your time more efficiently or to manage it in a way that you're owning it more. You know, you need to own responsibility for your own time. And you have to um, expect the people around you to respect your need to own it, and that you that you have a need to have ownership over your time and to learn how to manage it well. Ask your family to respect you in that and that you're uh, attempting to receive from the Lord the little things that you need to do, the inspiration you need to begin to tweak and change the way you do things. I would like to hear about it, Rosemary, when you figure that out, when you hear something and you've applied it and and that it's worked for you. I'd really like to hear it and I know that some of the ladies here would like to hear it with you. Yes, Rosemary, it is. You really do need to know your purpose and and um, when you're you know, you've got little ones and you don't have little ones anymore. Your son is older and so there's a possibility that your purpose is shifting a little bit. You know, consider the possibility. You know, he doesn't need you as much. Um, maybe you're supposed to be doing something uh, different with some of your time that used to be filled with something else, you know, taking care of your family. There's shifts that happen along the way of life when you're raising a family. And I know for me, um, when when I got the child training down and I was on a really good path and we we're producing really good fruit with my kids' education, um, I knew that my whole life couldn't be wrapped up in that indefinitely. It was always going to be wrapped up in my kids. You know, my life was going to be wrapped up in theirs. But there'd be shifts where I would be less needed. And I, when I came to the Lord, I knew that my purpose was in Him for the rest of my life. And that meant that He was going to have an unfolding purpose for me. And that's what happened. You know, I started taking on some writing. It was something that I could do while the kids were growing up. You know, I could edit while they were in the same room with me. Sometimes I would write at night when they were in bed and then do the editing, which didn't require so much thought, you know, concentration. I could do that while they were up and we were all doing life together. But I never excused myself from life. I didn't excuse myself from them. I didn't excuse myself from their need of me. I found ways to shift my purpose so that I would include a growing purpose that was just for me, something that God wanted me to do, but that wouldn't sacrifice the ongoing purpose of my family building, you see, and the relational building. I didn't sacrifice any of that. God will give you the inspiration for that. I think that all you moms need to have some kind of a personal purpose along the way that is unfolding, that shifts you into it as you grow your family, you know. I don't see any reason why not, you know, to do that. Because purpose, I tell you, when you have purpose and vision, you have a reason for everything you do. And you are intentional and purposeful in your days and with your time. And the more you want to do with your life, the more you have to manage your time. You find ways to make life work better for you the more purpose that you have. Okay, well, that was about all that I had on that particular message. I know it's short, and we do have more that we want to get done here. We're doing all the blogs on MarilynHouseville.com. We're videoing all of them, and so over time, we're going to get videos up on all the blogs. I'm excited about that. Be excited with me, ladies. Well, I love you. Jesus loves you. 
don't forget to love on your precious kiddos today and it doesn't matter how old they are you just love on them because they need your love and they need to know that you are there uh, noticing them they need to know that that you're affirming them many times a day ladies love on those precious kiddos okay i love you and i will see you next time bye bye Thank you.